Hello, welcome to another video from Avenue X on the drama Shan He Ling, Word of Honor. This will be my last and second video on the poetry and literature reference that this drama contains. It has already been over a month after it has finished airing in China, and yet does it feel like time has hardly passed? Like I've mentioned before, my videos do not contain all the literature cultural references this drama has. I just picked out the ones that I think are worth talking about, which gives you a good idea idea about just how much stuff they've managed to jam into this drama. So we're gonna pick up from where we've left it last time. Episode 14, when Wen Keqing is drinking, after a conversation with his subordinate, he has this line recited. This comes from, yeah, the big poetry classic, Shi Jing. And it means the people who know me would interpret something I do or I say as, wow, he's or she is worried. Whereas the people who do not understand me would read it as, wow, what is he asking for? After you've watched the whole drama, you know how fitting this line really is to Wen Keqing as a character and to everything he wants to do in this world setting. So for people who are interested in learning Chinese language, it's always good to remember this line. You can use it to literally praise somebody as somebody who would understand you. You can also uh, sign at occasions when you feel nobody understands you. After episode 14, we're heading to the big sequence that covers over an episode long plot about the big congregation that ended up in shit under the monument of the Five Lake Alliance. During this time, when Wen Keqing is very, very sarcastically, ironically talking about the Wu Hu Meng and commentating on their fight, he quoted many well known lines in Chinese literature. At the end of episode 14, he said this line Ni fang chang ba, wo deng chang, which means once you finished singing on the stage, you get off, I immediately get on. It is describing the show that everyone is putting on, all those pretentious good people who are all attending this big conference. If you read the classic Chinese novel, Hong Lo Meng, Dreams of the Red Mansion or the Story of the Stone, this is one of its most famous lines. The next line actually is, which means and in the end of it, you actually are doing something that you cannot benefit from. The people who come later grab the winning fruit. If you think about the five pieces of Liu Lijia in this drama, it is something that everybody is chasing after, going crazy about, but you give up your life for it and then eventually it ends up in somebody else's hand. Heading over to the next episode, Wen Keqing continues to quote some famous line that means similar things. This line comes from a Qin Dynasty play written by Kong Shangren, Tao Hua Shan, literally means peach blossom fan. Okay, very well known. And this line is so famous that other famous literature piece would quote it. For example, Hong Lo Meng, Dream of the Red Mansion and Story of the Stone actually also contains this line. Yan Kan Ta Gao Lo Qi, I watching his tall building rises. So these lines come from the perspective of a witness, of a bystander watching something happening. Yan Kan Ta Yan Bing Ke, I'm watching this person holding big banquets, welcoming all kinds of guests, watching his building collapse. These three lines are super famous in this play, and as you can tell, it's super fitting for Wen Keqing to say that, because he is watching it as a show, watching all these people chasing after those things that eventually will turn into nothing. Then heading over to the zombie and cave plotline in episode 18, they were back to back and then talking to each other and quoting a very famous poem and did a little bit adjustment of the original characters that literally made all the audiences scream in China. It comes from a poem that's written in Song Dynasty. And the original line is 只愿君心似我心, which means I only wish your heart is like my heart. Whereas in the drama version, they changed it into 幸德君心似我心, which means luckily I got your heart as mine. So this is the upgraded version of quoting poetry to make it even more fitting for the situation. For Song Dynasty, Song Si, this particular form, it has a lot of patterns. And this one is called 
卜算子 It's a particular pattern's name, and it's written by the poet Li Zhiyi. The specific title is literally the first line of this poem, and it's one of the most classic love poetry in Chinese literature. And I think I've mentioned it once in one of my previous videos on Chinese poetry related to dramas. Anyway, I'll quickly recite it and explain what it means to you. 我住长江头，君住长江尾。日日思君不见君，共饮长江水。此水几时休？此恨何时已？只愿君心似我心，定不负相思意。It means I live at the head of the river Changjiang, and you live at the end. Of this river, every day I miss you, but I cannot see you because back then there is no video calling. 共饮长江水 but we drink from the same river. When would the flow of the water in this river end? When would this sadness and regretfulness in my heart stop? I just wish your heart is like my heart, and I will never betray. This love between us and this promise between us. So that's what this poem means. And at this point, they're already quoting this poem. So does not matter if it is 社会主义兄弟情 right? <laughs> We all know what it is. And if you need any further confirmation, well, immediately after they got out of the cave and had this little. Chat and fight. I've already mentioned this scene in my lip dubbing video when they changed Wen Keqing's line. Well, in that line's close proximity, he also said, "Zhou Xiangong, 可怜则个吧 Okay, so that's not a poetry reference, but it's a literature and cultural reference. First. Zhou Xianggong. Zhou is Zhou Zishu's surname. Xianggong. Ninety-nine percent of the time is spoken from a woman, referring to her husband. If you've watched the concert. On the first day of the concert, when the actress Zhou Ye was dressed up as Gu Xiang, and then Ma Wenyuan dressed up as Cao Weining, and had that wedding song and stuff. Afterwards, they changed how they call each other. Ma Wenyuan called Zhou Ye <laughs> Cao Furen, and then Zhou Ye called Ma Wenyuan. You're no longer Cao Da Ge, Big Brother Cao. You are A Xiang the Xiang Gong. So this is an ancient society common term for a woman calling the husband. <laughs> Wen Keqing is just playing with it. He's calling him Zhou Xianggong, teasing about it, and then he said, 可怜则个吧 Okay, so please pity, right? Please put your pity on me. The 则个 at the end of the sentence is a very interesting word. It doesn't mean anything. It's one of those words that exists to show a particular type of emotion. It can actually mean surprise. It can mean question. It can mean kind of exclamation. So it really doesn't have a specific meaning, and it's a very ancient term in contemporary Chinese. Nobody uses it anymore. But if you go and read Ming Dynasty, Qing Dynasty, even older novels, you'll come across this word showing up at the end of the sentence. But there's always a but. Hey, hey. There is a very famous Chinese literature. Piece that's called the Jin Ping Mei, and it kind of heavily influenced Hong Lou Meng that came after. For a long time, it was、um, censored in China because of its very promiscuity content. In this novel, this line has been used. The male lead character, who is a rich guy who has a lot of wives, comes to one of his concubines, pinched her feet, and said, "Ke lian ze ge ba, put your pity on me. Go and figure what that means and what kind of like." Image and reference and atmosphere of that scene can be. This is totally the scriptwriter is doing. Yeah, she's just showing off how much she knows, and then she's just jamming in obvious and not obvious clues for people to go figure. Then head over to episode twenty-five when they had that heart-to-heart -heart conversation at Four Seasons Manor drinking. And also selling the nuts for the sponsor. I've kind of explained half of the poetry reference that showed up in their conversation in the name meaning video about Wen Keqing's name in particular. 天涯孤鸿无根行客 After they've said that, at the end of the conversation, Zhou Zishu stood up and looking into the garden and said this line: 客行虽云乐，不如早玄归 It has been very obvious about. What it is talking about, but at the same time being very covert. It kind of happens on both levels. At this point of the drama, right before that, Zhou Zishu said to Wen Keqing, "I'm gonna stay here and living with Cheng Ling. If you wanna come back, this is the home that you can come back to." Wen Keqing obviously is very moved. But then he stood up and said this line, and not looking at Wen Keqing and looking into the garden. Why, which is just such an Asian thing. <laughs> It's like the moon is really pretty in a Japanese literature tradition. You guys, if you've dabbling, you know what it means. So Zhou Zishu stood there and said, 客行虽云乐，不如早玄归 which comes from a Han Dynasty poem that now has lost 
the name of the author. But the poem is called Ming Yue He Jiao Jiao. And this line means, although traveling as a guest is very happy, right? You can have a lot of fun on your travel, that's for sure. But not as great as come back home sooner. Without looking at each other, without saying these things out, it just has even more emotional undercurrent going behind the scene. Then head over to the episode 27 where the absolutely famous scene took place. There's one line that's spoken by Ye Bai. Before he let these two lovebirds go, he said this line. 天地不仁以万物为刍狗. This comes from Dao De Jing, the classic of Taoism written by Lao Zi. First, let me explain Chu Gou. Chu Gou is grass tied up dog. So dry grass, dry hay, you make a dog like you make basically a doll out of balloon, the same thing. In Chinese ancient history, it's something that you use for sacrificial ceremony. Sometimes people don't have money or they just don't really kill animals, they just use the pretended animals made out of grass. Tiandi is heaven and earth, which means nature or universe or the law of the entire universe operating. Bu ren, bu is not. Ren is one of the most important virtue that the Confucius advocates to the world. You can Google that and then see articles after articles explaining what that word means. But here, interestingly, it's saying Tiandi bu ren. Tiandi, the nature, heaven and earth is not ren. Why? Treating everything in this world as the grass dog that's used for sacrificial ceremony. For the law of universe, it doesn't have any partial treatment to anyone. It doesn't quite care about what our human world decides to be good or bad, moral or immoral, justified or not. Kind of referencing both to the fact that Wen Keqing's parents are really good people, but they don't end up with a good life. Their ending is pretty sad. Whereas Wen Keqing, as leader of the Ghost Valley, has done a lot of wrong things and definitely has killed a lot of people. But then, you know, he still gets to get away and somehow Ye Bai Yi is the person who let him go. So Ye Bai Yi is saying it's very ironic, but it's also very true, which is the law of the universe kind of treats everything impartially. And if you watch a lot of period Chinese dramas, you will see this line showing up everywhere. And it's very worth remembering. In episode 29, we will come across Gu Xiang and Cao Wenning walking on the path. He started to do his <laughs> mixed match rapping of Chinese love poetry. As he always does, he first doesn't quote the exact lines, so showing that he probably doesn't remember it very well. The second is um, he mixed different stuff together. <laughs> Which is why Wen Keqing didn't like him the first time he saw him. Okay, let me tell you why this is funny. First line comes from a very famous Ci, Song Dynasty, mm -hmm, particular type of poetry. And in the original poem, a love poem, it goes like Literally means the golden winged and the jade dew. Once they meet, they overtake, they become so much greater than everything, so many other things in this human world. As a love poetry, it just means when the two perfect lovers meet, what can happen, right? It's just so much better than everything else in this world. You can interpret that on a very flesh level, okay? Because this is a very <laughs> poem. But then you can also interpret it at a higher level, right? As the people who are so many, they're perfect, and when they're together, nothing else in this world compares. So that's what the original line means. It is 圣确人间无数, which means it's better than everything else, countless things in this world. Whereas Xiao Tao changed it into 天上人间不算数, which literally means what's in heaven and what's in this world, okay? added together, do not count as anything. It's such a bad student that he doesn't remember the original line. But the funny thing about this line is, it's actually also talking about the story of Niu Lang and Zhi Nui, two very famous mythological lover characters in Chinese folklore. A human guy and a goddess. The guy is a cowboy, not a westernized American cowboy, literally a guy who hurts 
cows. The lady actually comes from heaven. She's the daughter of the heavenly emperor and she is the goddess of textile, of weaving stuff. And they got together, they got separated and they can only meet each other once a year over the bridge that's made by the magpie birds. Anyway, it's kind of already hinting if these two characters are as Niu Lang and Zhi Nui, the guy and the goddess, it's not gonna end very well for them. Also, the second line kind of confirms that, which is 在天愿为比鸟,在地愿结连理树 Originally coming from the very famous Changheng Ge from Bai Ji Yi that I've heavily, heavily mentioned in Joy of Life poetry video. This is written by Bai Ji Yi, who is kind of like a private fan of the love affair of Tang Minghuang, the emperor and Yang Guifei, one of the most famous beauty in Chinese history. And the original line is 在天愿做比鸟,在地愿为连理枝 In the sky, we want to be birds who fly side by side and on the ground we want to be uh, the plants, the trees that grow with their branches intertwined. It is about the love story of the emperor and the concubine that didn't end well in history too. So this guy, while he's reciting to love poetry, first he didn't quote them correctly, second um, they're like really kind of omen for the relationship. Again, I have to say this is definitely intentionally done by the scriptwriter and she's just showing you what she can do and then adding more information and more meaning behind the obvious lines for the observant audiences to pick them out. Then to wrap up today's video, there is a poem that got recited twice again in this drama, that's by two supporting heroes, but because their love story is tied with this poem, I think it's worth talking about. Liu Qianqiao, Yan Gui, and Yu Qiufeng. This is a poem that comes from Tang Dynasty and it's actually a song by the official entertainment organization at the time called Jiao Fang. Now we'd actually recruit musicians, singers, girls, dancers to perform. So this is a song that's passed down to today. It comes from the period, comes from the background. We do not know who wrote it. Let me quickly recite it and explain it. 平江柳色青,花月摇香手,岁岁复年年,逢此冰消后,几回沧海平,山雪别云秀。一眼万年青,为此心如旧。平江柳色青,平江 is a river, 柳色, the color from the willow, is 青青 can mean blue, but here it can also mean the newly grown, very lively colors coming from the new branches of the willow. 花月摇香手, the flower on the bank and the moon in the sky, far distance apart, but then watches over each other. This gives you a very beautiful picture of the spring with the river, with the new willow, with flower and with the moon. 岁岁复年年,逢此冰消后 岁 literally means age, 复 Repeat, nian nian is year after year. So this is a way of double saying year after year, year after year. Feng si, bing xiao hou, feng, coming across, encounter, si, this, bing xiao hou, ice melting after. So meeting after the ice has melted, which means meeting after the season has turned into spring. The first half of this poem describes this beautiful picture that takes place year after year, and the second half kind of further explores the idea on time. 几回沧海平,山雪别云秀,几回 a couple of times, how many times? Tsanghai, the vast ocean, Ping, flattened. So it is showing on a geological kind of scale of time. How many times has the ocean dried out and turned into a flat land over a particular place? Shan Xiu, the snow on the mountain also turns into the cloud. Both are showing nature's time scale over a long time how things keep changing. The last line brings the whole thing back and land it on a human thing in comparison. With one look, 10,000 years become so light. All these changes have happened does not matter because only this heart is as old, as before, as unchanged, as it has always been. So it's a love poem comparing the geological time scale of changes and saying that nature can change however it likes, my heart will never change. It is so ideal and romantic and so not true, right? Because nobody can live as long as mountains and oceans, honestly, right? We probably already reincarnated like a thousand times when some 
mountain just moved an inch. But love poetry, right? It is about love that can last forever. But then when you think about the characters who recite this poem, both of them, Yu Qiufeng, Liu Qianqiao, isn't it ironic that their love is so unreliable and it's perfectly picked, right, for this purpose? Now that will conclude. Avenue X's videos on Word of Honor's poetry references and pretty much also conclude most of the videos I could think of doing on this particular drama. Not saying, not saying in the future I'm not gonna do any other videos. I'm recorded, edited like this just because there really is a lot of things right about this drama. So I'm definitely not closing that door here. I hope you've had a good time and not finding the time you've spent watching the video wasted. Thank you for watching Up New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching and happy poetry reading.